doing? I wanted to bring you guys a deal we did recently today. Uh, we, we actually just closed on it today. It's something we've been working on for the past few weeks between Boylan Group and uh, Jeremy uh, and his company as well. It's a wholesale deal. And I kind of want to go over the gist of it, how we found it. Um, yeah, you know, it's a cool deal. Uh, it circled back around after about a month of me talking to the owner. Now I want to go over the, some numbers to everybody and just kind of show you how the, a wholesale transaction works. And actually, so. it's the first time I met David. Yes. We were at the Keller Williams office. Yep. I didn't know he was cold calling yep. for sell by owner leads. Yeah, it was a FISBO. Yeah. I didn't even remember that this was the house the yeah. first time I met you. Yeah, just a circle little background. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it was funny. So I met I met Jeremy. I had I had a cold call at FISBO for sale by owner, and I had gone out to the property, done a walkthrough, ran out my numbers. I came back, asked for his input on it. That right as I met him, um, and you know after that it, it it took about a month. You know we put an offer in. Owner didn't want the offer. Took about a month. She circled back around to us, came at us with with another counter offer uh, because it wasn't selling. And then from there, we we did a wholesale transaction to somebody who's going to now take it and flip the property. So you got to tell a story on that too, because that's a cool story. We will, yeah, story. it is a cool story as yeah. well. Yeah. So so to start, it was it was just a cold call. I had a list of for sale by owners that I was going through, and you know, I just call them up, ask them, you know really when you're doing that you want to get into the why of people are selling their property because when you're looking to find homes that are way below market value you've got to find the motivated sellers as you know you, you find the pain you, yeah find the pain but bigger the pain the lower the price so um, we found this owner and uh, her daughter had moved out of the house and uh, you know she needed a bigger house and and uh, her mother was the one that I think had bought it but she was just trying to sell it to get rid of it. She didn't want to deal with it anymore. Ended up having some pretty big foundation issues and that's why they had some trouble selling. So initially, um, we had looked at the numbers. It was, it was listed, so let me, I don't know if you guys will be able to see this. List price was 169,000. You're good. 169,000, um, which was already pretty low for the area. Um, the reason it was at that price, you know, houses like this are selling probably between 205, 225 in the area. Um, it was a three bed, one bath bungalow. Um, and the reason it had a low price initially is because of some foundation problems it had. So price was already reasonable kind of upfront. Um, but the way I calculated my offer is uh, we set a walkthrough with the owner. Um, and on a walkthrough, you want to go through and your inspection you look at everything I don't know what what do you do on a walkthrough typically Jeremy I take a ton of pictures you know yep. I'm always thinking about marketing and mm -hmm. if you take a lot of pictures you don't have to take a lot of notes yeah so I average 150 pictures per property yeah. wow. exterior yeah, interior yep. if it looks good take a picture of it if it looks bad take a take picture, a picture of it. yeah, yeah. so you go back later you can do your evaluation absolutely yeah. miss anything you're good you're covered or like in your case yeah. follow up you yep. would think I could remember, but how many houses you look at in the meantime? No way, yeah. No you way at, you we're looking at so many houses yeah. online or in person, so um, you really got to take a lot of pictures. So um, what was what was odd about this house is that in the basement it had a wall that's kind of bowing in. It was it was strapped uh, with uh, the Kevlar straps or yeah. whatever, and it had a warranty, but but it was bowing in. I think that's what was scaring a lot of owners away. So uh, initially we came in and we looked at this and we said, okay, it's got a, a bowing wall. And it needs some concrete fixed in the driveway. It needs to be either sealed or mud jacked. Um, and besides that, the house is really fixed up a lot. I mean, the owner had done. Yeah, it's a great house. Work. It's a great yeah, house. So, great house. so the reason it wasn't selling for two oh five and up is because uh, is because of the foundation issue. I think scared a lot of homeowners away. So, um, so and the foundation yeah. is fixed. There's nothing wrong with it. it just oh yeah, nothing so wrong with it. It just yeah. it just it just freaks out. It's a, it's a you know it's a mindset thing. So. Um, we looked at it initially. I think we came up with two hundred and ten thousand uh, was our ARV. ARV is after repair value. Uh, you probably hear that a lot if you're getting into the flipping, wholesaling business. Um, basically, we look at comparable sales in the area, and we try to determine what this particular house is going to sell for after we've completely fixed it up and brought it up to market value. So um, I think two ten was what we yeah. went with. So so I'm just going to write all this out. So. 
Call it after repair value, after repair value retail value, value yep. 210000 True value. True value, yeah. There's, there's lots of different. different. Yeah. yeah. Yep, so from there, uh, do you want to maybe explain kind of how our equation works? or? Yeah, um, so it depends on the area you're at and how aggressive you are on your pricing. Some areas you want to go 25% mm -hmm. below minus rehab. Some areas you want to be 35%. Some areas like Royal Oak, it's going to be twenty percent. Yeah, have a so yep, chance. exactly. Yeah. So this is not disclaimer. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's, you it's, need to know it's your variable. market. Yeah, the market as well. Yeah. yeah. So so typically it's going to be your ARV times that percentage. So in this case we're going to use seventy five percent. So 0.75 or just seventy five uh, percent. And then from there you're going to minus all your rehab costs. Yep. So we got rehab costs, and that's gonna equal uh, something called your MAO. And your MAO is called uh, Maximum Allowable Offer, and that is the absolute max you should pay for this particular property in order to be able to cover all your repair costs, uh, closing costs on both the buying and the sell side, um, you know, you wanna you wanna have a good safety cushion there and then cushion for a good amount of profit. Absolutely. And in fact, sometimes this would be the mayo is the bare minimum. If you can get below mayo, below mayo much even better. better. Yeah. Even better. Yep. yep. So in this scenario, I want to run through the numbers. We're gonna go two ten times 0.75. So two ten times 0.75. And we come up with 157, 500. 157, 500. All right. And then from there, we're going to subtract our repair costs, which to fix that particular wall, we are thinking it probably 10 to 12,000 and then another 6,000 for um, the concrete. To be safe, let's just call it 20,000. So 20,000 in repair costs. And that brings us to 137,500 uh, is our MAO. All right. So I don't know about you. You probably start below MAO when you give your first offer. Well, yeah, this is very conservative. Yeah. So yep. something to explain is went with the lower comps, went with a higher rehab, and that this is a plus or minus. This gets you mm -hmm. close especially over the phone to make an offer. And then if you're close to this number, yep. that's, that's, that's yeah. how you do it. Yep. So. so I think initially we came in at like 125 to 130 and you're always going to hear the owner scoff at that. You know, there, she had it listed at 170,000. So, you know, obviously an owner's going to object to that and say, Oh, I can't pay that much. I don't want to, or I can't take, I won't, I'll never take that for this property. You know, this property is worth way more. So, you know, in that case, I will typically say to the owner, I can say, look, I'll, I'll, I'll show you comparable sales. I'll show you exactly what it's going to cost to repair. I want my offer to make sense to you and make sense for the both of us because this obviously for me and you, I want this to be a win-win situation. Um, so a lot of owners, you just got to get, get them over that hump and, and show them that the offer makes sense. And this situation didn't make sense to her. No matter what I said, she wouldn't take it. Um, so we left it at that. I followed up a week later, didn't hear back. Uh, and that was kind of the end of it. And then about a month later after that, uh, I gotten a text from her and she said, um, she said, I think in the text she said 150, 150. Non, she said, she said final offer or I'm going to list, fix the house myself and list it. Uh, she said 150, non-negotiable, you have till the end of the day to, to decide. So I went back, looked over everything. I thought it was still doable at 150 since this initial price was already conservative. She dropped it down 20,000 from that. So um, from there, basically, you know, we still thought that 150 was doable. Um, and then you want to talk about maybe the wholesale wholesale side because wholesale transaction, we're basically selling the contract to another investor that they're going to then take fix and flip. So what I did is I was taking my dogs out late at night. With a few opportunities, my phone rang, buzzed with an email. Mm. I pulled it out. I saw, I saw the comps. I saw the address. Yep. I had two buyers. I called my first buyer, my good friend, yep. and I knew he was looking for a flip in Berkeley because he's there in the Royal Oak area. And I texted him like, "Say yes now. I just yep. sent you something." Yep. 
it's it's David and Dylan deal. He said yes. I immediately replied to the mm -hmm. email. I think a couple times, and I wasn't satisfied with that, so I texted yeah. <laughs> several times. Yeah. And then, like five minutes later, I got pissed and I just called. Yeah, so. yeah. So we got, he, you know, they really wanted the deal. Yeah. We, we blast out to what's what's called our buyers list. We have, I think, right now we're probably up to five or six thousand people on this list, and it's a list of people we know, what are you know are interested in buying investment properties uh, for cash. We, you know, we we do all cash cash transactions really in this business as buyers. You know, a lot of times we'll finance or private money or uh, you know various different ways but typically it helps the buyer also you know give them a cash offer it's a little simpler um, also if you get a deal and you want to walk it out think it out draw it on a board take five days to make a decision this is why you need to know your shit because mm -hmm. I knew it I saw it I saw the comps yep. I made a decision immediately yeah. I called my good friend who was looking for a flip. He made his decision immediately. immediately. Yeah. And when you woke up in the morning, actually even two minutes later, that thing was gone. That's so all. Yeah. Know your areas, know yeah. your numbers. So when a good deal comes up, exactly, yeah, you can pounce because yeah. I'm your competition. And and he's your competition. He and I'm right going to yeah, pounce. Yeah, and he pounced on that one because because basically within five minutes of us emailing this deal out to our list, we had within five minutes, probably five or six sellers. Jeremy's the first one. We knew Jeremy. Jeremy's a good friend of ours. That's why it's good to have good connections. So, uh, you know, we gave the deal to Jeremy. Uh, and from there, what we do as wholesalers is you mark up a wholesaling fee. So really depend on the deal. I know you do a lot of stuff in Detroit. They're more expensive deals. So you have maybe a three. I have a whole range. Yeah. yeah so you have a smaller yeah. wholesale fee. So basically we get it under contract at 150, 150K. And then we look at how much margins in there for whoever's going to be the end buyer to be able to flip it. We want them to have, you know, a healthy margin. Obviously, they're not going to buy a deal if you have a huge wholesale fee in there. Um, it's just, you know, it's just not ridiculous. They're not going to buy it. Um, so we saw enough margin in there to be able to mark it up to 160000 as a wholesale fee, um, $10,000 wholesale fee. And then, uh, you know, from there, we we do what's called an assignment. We assign the contract from us to them and they uh, basically become the purchaser. They take our place in that contract. 162. 162. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. I sweetened the deal. So I, the deal. I also knew that they were going to get a bunch of emails yeah. right away. So, and I knew there's enough meat on the bone to get them more. So it doesn't hurt to do that too, by the way. Yeah. So we, we got the, the deal to him. He was able to mark it up a little bit extra, which was good. So it, you know, in, in this case, all I did uh, was call the owner, put in my offer, uh, follow up consistently. You know, we had to wait a little while. She circled back around, ran our numbers correctly, wholesaled it out to our really solid buyers list, and we were able to make twelve thousand dollars there. Now we split it between myself, Jeremy, and uh, Dylan Borland. Um, but but I mean that's it. It's as it's as simple as that. If you know your numbers, you know the market. Uh, you're you're good on the phone with owners. Uh, you're confident. You can really put deals together like this all day. This is my second wholesale deal putting together this week. The other one was four thousand dollar deal. I mean I'm Jeremy's doing them all the time. I mean he's yeah. just champ wholesale champ over here. So Gotta get um, out and enjoy. yeah yeah what they did successfully exactly. too. Is David and Dylan left enough meat on the bone? That it would sell in minutes. Yep. So if you want to, if you want to take, don't want to leave any meat on the bone. It might sell it for a week, two weeks, three weeks. Maybe yeah. you don't even sell it. Yeah, we don't. That's not we don't want to do that. Yeah, we yeah. could have maybe marked it to one seventy, and it still would have made sense, but it would have sold right away. We we don't want to have to sit on this. We like getting a buyer back in two minutes. We like hearing from somebody right away. They want the deal that quick. Ten grand, twelve grand. Yeah, then so, you're a hero to your investors too. You like you leave enough meat on the bone, everybody makes yeah, money. Yeah, we don't we don't want to yeah. wholesale. Up. You don't want to send off shitty deals to people, and so we we you know you leave enough meat on the bone for whoever's gonna flip it at the end, and it makes sense for everybody. Win win win. Um, and that's basically the gist of this deal. Yeah, yeah, that was a good one, and we just closed it today. They just closed today. Yeah, so yeah. a sweet deal. Uh, it's all wrapped up now, and you know it, it really doesn't take. A whole lot to put together stuff like this. You, for sale by owner Zillow? Did yeah. it cost you anything to dial that person? Nothing, no, nothing. So, I mean, people would think that it just, it's ridiculously hard to get into this real estate business wholesale. No. $12,000 made on a deal, probably put in four hours, 
three or four hours of work between contacting the owner, myself, due diligence, walk through the property. Four or five I figure hours. I have yeah. three hours into this yeah. max. Four or five, yeah. So, I mean, it's, it's, I don't want to say it's as simple as that, but if you're willing to put in the work, you can do stuff like this all day, all day long. So, it's simple. Yeah. And if you're interested in something like this, where can they go and sign up on your list? Uh, yeah, you can go to uh, go to the Borland Group LLC.com or just go. Google Dylan Borland, the Borland Group. You'll find a website. Contact us. We'll get you right on our buyers list if, Sign you're, up. if you're interested. Yeah, so we we have a you list. Do not want to make money, so the end buyer is going to go out and make fifteen to twenty five grand. Yeah, so the end buyer, I guess, to to go to the back end of this. Yeah, let's show them. The end buyer. Complete the circle, so you know what what happens here, right? Yeah, exactly. It's like the Costco of real estate right yeah. here. High quality, low price, you're welcome. There you go, exactly. Yeah. The Borland Group, LLC.com. So the end buyer uh, was in 162. Let's say 165 after closing costs, right? Put $20,000 into the property. So they're all in plus 20K. They're all in at 185,000. All right. What do you say? AR, ARV is 200 times. 210. Yeah. So 210 minus 185. That is 35. 20. Yeah, 35. No. 25. 25. Yeah. 25,000. Minus some closing costs. You might say $20,000. So at the end of the day, all they have to do is fix the wall. You know, maybe paint, fix the concrete a little bit, and end buyer making twenty five thousand dollars. So, um, like we said, if you want to win, win, win for everybody, and houses are selling for up to two twenty five or even there. So, yeah, these are so, conservative numbers. Yeah. So, in, so in a good market like you have today, we you could sell you could sell this property for up to two hundred twenty five thousand dollars. What it, what it was looking like for us. So, um, really, I mean, this this is this is the kind of stuff we do every day. Typically, our company would be the ones to flip it. We don't really do Berkeley as much, so that's why we want to wholesale it out. Um, but I mean, it's that it's out there. These are out there every day. I mean, we find them all the time. Uh, and if you're really interested in, in learning more, come to our meetup. We have a meetup uh, first Saturday of every month. Jeremy has Renegade Detroit Investors, one of the best uh, Detroit investor clubs in Metro Detroit. Um, huge group. Podcasts all the time, all the time, live on Facebook all the time. Incredible content. You want to learn? You want to get into real estate? Meet Jeremy. He'll he'll teach you. He's you know we're looking for people to join the business and, and work with us. So um, if you're interested in making this kind of money all the time, uh, you know reach out to us. We're your guys. So. The board of the group LLC. Sign up yep. to get this. Get on your buyers list. We'll send get you these it. kind of deals all day long. So awesome. that's it. And our first deal together. It was our first deal, yeah, yeah. That's right. That's it. Congrats. I appreciate it, man. That was awesome. Yeah, it's a, a sweet deal. Yeah. So, so thanks, guys, and and uh, we'll we'll keep putting out this kind of content so you can keep learning. Thank you. Sorry.